Hi folks, my name is Chirandan and I work as a data scientist with Boston Institute of Analytics. Uh, thank you so much for joining in for the Python series. So this is basics of Python series where we are covering different components of Python programming which are important for you to become a data scientist, to become a data analyst. Python is obviously one of the most uh, important languages, okay, uh, especially if you want to uh, have a career in uh, this particular field. And this uh, lecture or series of lectures is basically to understand different components of Python and uh, so that you know you can become an effective uh, or rather I won't say effective Python programmer but effective at applying Python techniques in your data projects or you know uh, place where you work. So one such com concept that we are going to start off with is uh, if else loops. If else loops are super important okay it is also called as conditional operationing in Python. Why do we call it conditional operationing in Python is basically because it depends on conditions. Okay. In schools, uh, we you must have seen a flowchart, right? So uh, flowchart had multiple inputs. So for example, there was one input and if that input was true, it used to give us the output. But at the same time, if that input was false, then it used to go to the other block. It used to check whether that input is correct or not. And it is if, if it was true, uh, it gave it it gave us the output and if it was again false then it it used to go to the third block so on and so forth and that is nothing but what an if else loop is okay uh, in hindi we say ye nahi to wo wo nahi to ye okay that's basically if else loops okay let us start off okay here we have two uh, values okay a is equal to 20 and b is equal to 4 okay just by looking at this thing we know that hey, a is greater than b okay but at the same time let me put it through a condition okay what condition it is I say if a is less than b okay if 20 is less than 4 print true else else is nothing but the opposite of if condition that is else is nothing but a is greater than b and else print false okay that is the condition that I have put okay please note the spaces that you see be before print is something called as an indentation okay i've written right here it's called an indentation okay it's usually anywhere between two to three spaces okay you don't need to give that this is a basic structure of writing an if else loop so if a is less than b colon please follow that particular format okay else it will throw error print true else print false let us run this and see what do we get false obviously it is false because i'm so sorry yeah false obviously because a is not less than b right a is greater than b okay and because these are integer types okay these are not float types so let us see if it can work with float values as well okay let me take a float example let's say x is 10.51 and y is 11.63 and if x is less than y look at how i'm writing the syntax okay if x is less than y colon enter when I put enter, it automatically takes the distance of two space. Okay. Print. What do I print? I print that hey, x is obviously less than then I'll I'll just say true or rather x is less than y. Okay. And if that is not the condition, that is x is greater than y, I'll print x is greater than y. Okay. Let us run it yes what do we get we get x is less than y obviously 10.51 is greater than is less than 11.63 okay so if else conditions work with integer data they also work with float data okay let us take one more example for that matter okay if c and d yeah 200 and uh, 100 and 200 if c is less than d print true and else print false let us print this and what do we get we get true okay because c is less than d okay let us do one thing okay let us now plot some grade grading system okay i'll say i'll i've already mentioned a variable uh, value okay let's say grade is equal to 60 okay now let us say that if grade is less than or rather if grade okay grade is less than 60 print oh sorry okay print b grade else 
print a grid okay let us see what do we get now we get a grid okay because we've already mentioned that hey if x is now if f if grid is less than 60 okay which means that it will take 60 now let me just put if grid is less than or equal to 60 and let's see what do we get we're getting b grid why do we get b grid because if x is less than equal to 60 you will print print b grid else else means anything which is greater than 60 then it will print a grid okay let me write 80 here okay where is it you have to be like very sensitive with you know when working with <laughs> Jupyter, spider notebooks okay let me just write 80 here and let's see what do we get let me run it what do we get a grade obviously i'll be get i'll be getting a grade because you know the grade is greater than 60 okay and that is how you can all this is also one of the ways to write uh if else conditions is when you know you've already defined the variable and the value and then you run an if else loop which is doing conditioning for that particular variable okay again an example of float type okay let's now let's work on something as to what is an elif okay we uh, uh, till date till now we have done if and else pretty easy to understand but what's elif in between okay elif is something which is between if and else okay it's the condition that comes exactly between if and else okay and elif is basically used when you have multiple conditions to put okay and please note you can have multiple elif conditions okay there there has to be one if there has to be one else but there can be number of elif conditions okay for example here a is equal to 400 b is equal to 450 okay correct super easy to understand what i have said if a is less than b print a is less than b elif a equal to equal to b print they are equal now what now this is like the condition which is in between a is less than b a is greater than b okay these are the two extreme conditions a is less than b a is greater than b but what in between what if i have to define a condition in between less than b and greater than b i'll be using elif okay if a is less than b print a is less than b elif a equals to b print they are equal else else is nothing but opposite of if condition that is a is greater than b print a is more than b okay let us run this condition what do we get we get a is less than b now let's write a is equal to 400 and b is also equals to 400 okay let us see what do we get okay let's run this yeah they are equal now this is sufficing the elif condition okay because we wanted a condition in between yeah and that is how you know you can use elif condition okay elif condition is very important especially when you're working with you know, multiple things and uh, when you want to do multiple condition formatting now till the till now we have seen how are we working with string data uh, sorry how are we working with in data how are we working with float data uh, how and when can we use elif uh, just a reminder but there can be multiple elif conditions and elif is anything that is between if and else a is less than b a is greater than b what in between a equals to equals to b and that is where elif comes into picture let's work with the string data now okay in string data i am asking the user to give me an input okay you can see the word has been highlighted here whenever the word is being highlighted it means that it is an inbuilt function okay it's an inbuilt function and please note whenever you want to name a variable okay whenever you want to name a variable make sure that you don't name that variable as an inbuilt function you know that is not a cool thing to do okay uh, because it you know eventually it will be like very confusing and might also end up throwing errors okay so i've asked that hey i've stored an input input is typed something okay for example uh, just imagine you know whenever you are opening up a gmail window yeah so you enter or you input your email id you input the password yeah? and then is when you get into the go into the inbox of your gmail account and this is what we're doing here okay my input is the name of variable you can name it x y or whatever yeah input type something that i'm asking them to type something if the length of my input whatever i'll input okay that will be stored in my input 
So if the length of that variable, that is if length of my input is less than or equal to 5, print the length of input is less than or equal to 5. Okay, again there is an indentation, obviously, whenever there is if else elif, wherever there is if and so on and so forth, if else elif, in the print statement you will see indentation. Else, what is else condition? Opposite of if condition which is length of my input is greater than 5. Print the length is more than 5. Let us run this. And now Python will ask us to input something. Okay, let's run this. So it is asking me to try something. Okay, let me write my name and I hit enter and it says, hey, the length is more than five. Obviously, you know, it will give me because it is sufficing this particular condition. Yeah, it is sufficing the else condition because the length of the input has to be less than or equal to five. But let me write length length has to be, you know, let me change the condition and put it 10. Yeah, okay, what's wrong? Okay, just a moment. Yeah, let me type something again. Kirandan. Yeah, it is giving me the length of, yeah, I have to also change it here. Okay, so let, let us go by the standard nomenclature or uh, standard uh, value again. Okay, let me just print it again here. Okay, what's wrong? Okay, less than equal to five. What is it? What is the value? Have we written any? Okay, 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 got it. Yeah, sorry for that. All right, write something. Okay, let me write star. The length of the input is less than or equal to five. Okay, obviously, yeah. So you have seen, yeah, we have asked the user to input some input a value. And when the user inputs a value, it will check the length. Len, again, a highlighted function that, is, that means that it's an inbuilt function. If length is less than or equal to five, it is going to give me the condition that I've stated. Okay. All right. Let us now uh, play a game. Okay. Um, this is nothing but a guess guess game. Okay. We all, all of us have, you know, uh, played this game in our childhood that, hey, guess what's on my mind? What number is on my mind? And this is the similar game. So I'm printing the condition or rather I'm printing a statement right at the start that is Hey, I'm thinking of a number between one and zero. Can you guess what is it? Yeah, but I've already, uh, you know, I've already mentioned that the guess, if the guess is three, the guess is right. Else, any other guess except three is going to be wrong. Yeah, I asked the user to input the number just how we ask the user to input something. Yeah, if my guess, what is my guess? My guess is nothing but the user that is going to be that is going to input a particular number that will be stored in my guess. If my guess is three, only then is it right, else it is false because I have number three on my mind. Okay, let's take four for that matter. Yeah, and let me just print it out. Yeah. So he's asking that, hey, I'm thinking of a number between one and 10. Guess what number it is? I say, is it four? I know oh, you guessed it right. Okay, let me, I'm a superman. You know, I guessed it right at the first place. Let me, okay. Uh, is it 10? No, sorry. Uh, okay, let me run it again. Is it 6? No, sorry. Okay. Uh, is it 3? Yeah. Oh, not even 3. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, yeah, I changed the number. Okay. Is it 4? Yeah, I guessed it right. Okay. And I win the hamper. All right. So this is nothing but just a guessing game. Yeah. Now there are multiple such games or other things that you can build around with just using input function. Yeah, so input uh, clubbed with if and else. Yeah, can be a bit of a it can be a bit uh, a power some powerful stuff. Yeah. So what have we done here? Pretty easy to understand, guys. I've asked the user to input something. Yeah, input something. Input something, and. On that particular input, I'm just running an if else loop. That's it. You can also mention an elif loop. Okay. For that matter, you can do anything. Yeah. All right. Last example for the day, just to give you guys as to a flavor as to what you can do. I've mentioned three variable details. Okay. Just before this, we were giving a equals to 10, b equals to 20, so on and so forth. Let's now work with some serious variables. I give a name. My name is Chirantan Lonkar. My height in meters is let's say two meters for that matter. I'm, I'm not two meters tall, two meters like eight feet, but hypothetically. Uh, weight is 120 kgs for that matter. I've given a formula for BMI calculation, okay, which is nothing but weight upon height meter square. Yeah. 
I print the calculated BMI is and if I run a if else loop an if else loop okay let me go uh, let me run it through you again we have three variables okay we have three variables these are not input variables these are prefed variables we already have the values we have the name we have the height we have the weight why do we have height and weight because we are here we are what do, what are we doing we are doing something called as let's call it bmi calculator yeah and uh, this is the formula for bmi calculation that is weight upon height meter square i am going to print the calculated bmi is if the bmi calculation is less than 25 i print name and is overweight or not else else is opposite of if so if the bmi is greater than 25 it is going to print is overweight okay so let me just run this yeah is overweight yeah based so because you know my bmi calculation how much is it coming so i don't know what calculate i think let's also print this okay yeah so we get to know what bmi calculation is being done uh let me run through you it again mm. all right so yeah the calculated bmi comes out to be 30 okay if you see right here my calculated bmi is coming out to be 30 which is greater than 25 okay which is not less than 25 if it was less than 25 it was it would have come that hey chirantan is not overweight but the calculated bmi comes out to be 30 which is nothing but sufficing the else condition and hence it comes out to be that hey chirantan sorry your you know your obese you have to work on your health and get it down okay get the weight down so that is how you know you can work on multiple uh, ideas you know you can you can build a bmi calculator you can build a normal math calculator you can build you know something like a license approval system yeah if if the candidate is above a particular age then give her the license if she is in a particular range you know cross sell her her your driving tutorials if she is way below the age you know just have a candy yeah all right so that was all about if and else loop yeah and before starting with the next lecture that is for loops we're going to you know have a a quick a quick revision of if and else loops i hope you like the video okay so let's now move to for loops okay thank you so much guys thank you so much